Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today is our Patron's Choice Day, and I am very grateful to them because they're going to be helping me fill in a rather glaring knowledge gap. We're going to be listening to The Scorpions performing Still Loving You, and this will be my very first time ever hearing them. I know, I feel a bit, like kind of guilty about that. They're a big name in rock. They've inspired tons of acts and bands which we've seen on the channel already. They were described by Rolling Stone as the heroes of heavy metal, and MTV called them the ambassadors of rock. So they're a very big deal, and somehow I've yet to hear them. So we're gonna change that today. I also just wanted to shout out to all of you that are watching this. Please do go back and watch the band perform the song all the way through without pauses and interruptions. I interrupt to talk about what's really awesome and how they make these cool sounds. But uh, if you wanna get like an appreciation for the song overall, I definitely recommend going back and watching it all the way through on their channel. We always supply a link in the about section of the video. So find that and go and listen to them and support these bands. And now let's get to lots of pauses and interruptions. Here are the Aus Hannover, the Scorpions. impressions. This is Klaus's, uh, Klaus's voice that we're hearing here and seeing him perform too. Um, love the stance he's taken on the stage, right? I, anytime you've got that wider stance, sometimes you call it horse stance. Um, it's really good for getting support down low, almost into the stage, which can be particularly great for extended long high notes in particular, um, which sounds like he's got a lot of those up his sleeve. Uh, this uh, this various change in tone quality is beautiful. The way he's using his breath and riding the air, it really just sounds like, almost like he starts the air flowing and then he just like surfs on top of it with the voice. It's really, really pretty. And I think it's beautiful how much breathiness he adds in it. And then the passion that you hear come through at certain moments. So um, I understand that this song is essentially about a love affair and you get that from the very first moment in this like breathy intimacy and then this um, like fervent passion. It's really, that's very, very nice. Good vocals. Now let's go just right here. <laughs> wasn't sure the first time I heard, but I think that what he's also doing is switching registers to help achieve that uh, timbre change. So when you hear a much softer, um, floatier, airier sound, I think he's using falsetto there. Um, it's hard to be 100% sure. I don't know his voice that well yet, but I thought I heard a switch in there, very, very subtle switch. Um, and that would let him then bring a lot more power when he's using his full voice and then really um, lighten off of it in this like almost hazy falsetto sound. Ooh, it's very nice. 
Atmosphere that this is creating overall. It um, it has a it does have like a steaminess to it. It's um, it's very um. It almost feels like it's hovering in time. It's pretty. Ooh, the pitch side. Fight. Fame of fight. Another fascinating thing in his voice is that he adds like, adds some nasality, even on the top, it's got major cut as a result. Like it just lasers through everything else. One more time back here. Listen, uh, listen for those moments when he's adding the just like a little bit of nasality. It, it creates even more focus in the sound. <laughs> So by the way, one of the ways you can create that nasality is um, just through a little bit of soft palate dropping. Essentially, if your soft palate is up, the sound is going to exit through your mouth. If the soft palate is down, like all the way down, it's going to exit through your nose on like an M or an N, mm, right? That's just going through your nose when it exits. So if you're singing uh, like this and you want to add just a little bit of nasality to the sound, drop the soft palate a little bit. A little bit goes a long ways, okay? But it's all about soft palate control. Love, oh love, can break down the wall someday. I will it's beautiful breath. I will it's almost like he's sigh every time. It's really haunting the way he sings you and, and uh, elongates it and, and riffs on it at the end. Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> I liked that one. We're going to go back and listen to that a few times, but we're actually going to go back further. A few reasons. Uh, I noticed he doesn't have any shoes on. I've talked already about that stance. Uh, I personally really love seeing on stage is barefoot because I feel like I can get into the stage more. If you think about your breath support being lower, um, like definitely you should think about your breath support being like down to your hips because the very bottom muscles that can help with the breath support are going to be pelvic floor muscles, but it can be so useful to go further. 
uh, and think about it going all the way down into the stage, like coming up from underneath the stage. And if a person has really um, is grounded in the stage, that's helpful. Having bare feet can really help with that too. Additionally, having bare feet can help with posture. So that's helpful. I, singing in heels is a pain, guys. It's a pain. <laughs> Um, so there's a, with, okay, I'm going to explain further. Heels sometimes can cause like a little bit of sway back to happen in women. And if that happens, your pelvis gets out of alignment so that it's harder to get into that lower breath as well. So anyhow, um, it just adds another complication. I love being barefoot on stage. So I want to go back and listen to the way that he's supporting through super long lines. They're like, just gorgeous. You hear the sound soaring for such a long time without any disturbance in it. That's not got like any like boop jiggles or cuts out. It just like is like a really long, gorgeous line. And that's at least partly due to this fantastic support. Okay, let's go right here. That note so long. That's pretty. One more time on that note. That's a great moment. Go back further. I love the soft tone quality. And the vibrato here. <laughs> at this he is working he's working he's sweating really really good singing is hard work it shouldn't feel really hard right here it should feel like you're exhausted physically though when you've sung a whole opera or a whole show afterwards you should just be like okay wow I really used my support system to sing really well the vocal folds should be like pretty good you know, they've had the support, but your lungs might feel tired. Your legs might even feel tired if you're getting into the stage like I just talked about a bit ago. He's sweating. He is using a lot of great support. Baby, try. <laughs> Start on the top note there. He's got great pitch too. No back further. Also really interesting. The first one he chooses to do like a little bit of a like a toss off, a little just like a hint of a slide off at the end, and the second one he chooses to put a little vibrato in there. It I like it when people. Um, when they say the same word, but give different expression, if you're going to say it back to back, you need to say, or we'll sing it back to back really, but you need to sing it with something different the second time. And he's doing that here. <laughs>
she is continuing the support and um, like almost like bridging phrases. He, I love the way he's essentially holding the tension between all of the lines. Even when he stops singing, it almost feels like he's continuing, right? Um, this to me is, uh, I associate it very much with a classical approach. You would take that same approach when singing an aria of like, I'm just going to stay present the whole time. Even the breath is a way to be expressive and uh, that it holds attention. It's really hard to pick a spot to pause. <laughs> and it, it sounds like, like it's just continuously being drawn out from the inside of him. Like we don't ever really have a moment of reprieve. I guess the instrumental solo at one point felt like a little bit of a pause where there was a, a break. But once he starts singing, it's just the energy is continuing the whole time. That is, uh, for me, I think that that is a mark of mastery that I hugely appreciate in good singing. It's fantastic. Let's go back a little bit. Um, just notice the way he's bridging those phrases. It's very interesting. So that's a great example right there. I would try to change things that killed our love. A lot of people, when they were singing this um, the first time, or you know, maybe if they'd worked on it for a while but didn't know how to bridge the phrase, they would split it into two phrases. They would say, I would try to change the things that killed our love. But he does take that breath in the middle, but he keeps going in a really sensible phrase. I would try to change the things that killed our love. Go back again. I would try to change things that killed our love. Yes, I've heard your pride. You know what you meant love. You should give me a Long chance. Please give me the end. I'm still oh. just a little bit again. I, he keeps it rolling for it. He's repeating, I still loving you, but it, and it feels like it has, this is perfect for the lyrics too. It feels, I feel that continuation, continuation of energy throughout this whole ending. I'm still loving you. Oh my goodness. I almost feel exhausted by how much tension he could carry through with those phrases. Like, it leaves me a little bit breathless. It was just really, really impressive. I feel like I've just gone to an opera in many ways. Wow. And I very much appreciated the very stark differences in timbre that he used with that breathy, intimate timbre, and then the more passionate, powerful timbre. It seemed very appropriate for a song about a love affair. It was just very tasteful and showed so much great vocal technique. Wow. Uh, and I love the, the song overall too. You know, still loving you, that the slow tempo choice to go with it, the ambiance that the band set up, the way it just felt like drawn out. 
Really cool. I can see why they are such an inspiration to many bands. Wow. Yeah, I feel inspired. I want to go practice some arias now and see if I can have that energy continuation through between my phrases. Wow. Just great. Great, great, great. Thank you, patrons, for this choice. Uh, I'm so happy to have that gap of knowledge filled in and also very intrigued by it. So I'd love to know uh, more recommendations for the Scorpions. Please write those down below. By the way, our Patreon is super awesome. We have really, really great people. We talk about music, uh, a ton of course, and we also just sometimes hang out and play games. So I welcome you to join. You can find us on Patreon and you can find more information about me and classes I teach at thecharismaticvoice.com. I hope to see you all here again soon. Thank you.